Hey guys and welcome to another episode of my quest system series. In this and probably the next two videos we'll be wrapping up our quest system by implementing saving and loading functionality and firstly because it was asked in the comments and secondly because I was unable to find any tutorials on YouTube about that we will create a save system that is slot based. So you can save to different slots, load different slots and in general save multiple instances of your game. Today we'll just set up our save game with all the variables that are necessary for the player to be saved. So we'll not deal with the quests right now but only the other subsystems like health, prestige and XP and so on. And we'll also start to work on some of our widgets that we'll need later on. To get started, let's open up a blueprints folder and we'll create a new folder here called save games. Open that up and create a new blueprint class. Under the all classes we will search for save game and select that as a parent class. We can call that character save and open it up. Now in here we basically need duplicates of all the variables we want to save for our player. What we'll need to do is create a bunch of variables in here. First one will be called saved exp and will be an integer. Next one will be saved exp for next level. Also an integer. Next one will be the saved level. Afterwards we will need saved health and obviously save max health. Then we will save the obtained objects and that one will be a master object class array. Afterwards we'll create the saved prestige points. That will also be an array, but this time of the type s underscore region prestige. Next variable will be the saved region. And that will just be an e underscore region. Not an array, just a single variable. Hit the plus sign once again. And this time it will be the saved location of a player which means that this will have to be a vector. Next one, saved hour. So that will just define the time at which we saved the game. Make that an integer and create another one, saved minute, which will be an integer as well. If you also want to save the whole date, like the day and month, feel free to do that. But I think hour and minute will fulfill its purpose. After we created all those variables, we can go ahead and save our character save and instead open up our third person character because we need some functions in here now. But before we do that, there is one variable I want to create and we will call that default slot name. Make it a string, compile it and the default here will just be player Save. Then we can hit the plus function here and call the function save game to slot. Give it one input of the type integer which will be the to slot and we'll promote that to a local variable just slot. Afterwards we can create a save game object of the class that we just created so character save and to have access to our variables in there we'll need to cast it to the character save. Then we can promote that to a common variable, not local. We can call it save game object. And now what we'll have to do is drag in our save game object and set all the variables that we created in here to its duplicates in the third person character. Okay, so let's start with exp, set saved exp which we will set to our current exp. Then we can set exp for next level to the exp for next level that we have in here. Afterwards set the saved level
and we will set it to our current level. Let's copy over our save game object so we can keep our wire shiny and organized. We can set the health next, set saved health to the current health variable in our health system category. Afterwards set max health to our max health. Then we will set the obtained objects to our obtained objects in here. Copy over the save game object again. And we'll set the save prestige points now to the prestige points in here. Then set the save region to the current region. And then we will set save location. But this time we cannot just plug in a variable because we did not create one for that. So just drag all of that and search for get actor location. And the target will be self. Now we also want to set the saved hour as well as the saved minute. And to get those two variables, you want to right click and search for now. Then split the return value here and you've got access to the year, month, day and so on. We'll connect the hour to the saved hour and minute to the saved minute. If you also want to save the day, plug that in as well. And after we set all of the variables here, let's copy over the save game object once again. And call save game to slot. User index we will have to leave at zero, that's only used for different platforms and don't need that for PC. For the slot name we will use append and the A will be our default slot name and B will be a local slot variable converted to a string. So that way if we type in 2 for the slot the game will be saved as default slot name so player save and it will append the slot so player save 2. And that way you can have multiple save games at once. After we save the game to slot, we can just return. And that's it for our save game to slot function. Also it says that the execution doesn't end when the cast fails, so just add a return node and that error will go away. Obviously if we want to save our game, we also need a function to load our game. So call that load game from slot. It will have an input as well, integer, called from slot, and we'll call the function load game from slot. Not the function in our third person character, but the function in the game category. Here we'll need to find out our slot name again. So drag in the default slot name, append the from slot, convert it to a string, and plug that in for the slot name. Again, you will have to cast it afterwards, so cast the character save. And if that is successful, we can set our save game object to the return value here. And now we have to do everything we just did in our save game function, but backwards. So we have to get the variables from our save game object and set our variables in the third person character to that values. So let's start with saved exp and set current exp to that. Get the exp for next level and set our exp for next level to that. Then get the saved level. By the way, feel free to skip me doing this and just do it in your project because it's really repetitive work. So set current level, saved level. Afterwards, we can set our current health and max health. I'll just drag in all of the variables now. So obtained objects, prestige points, current region. Then I'll connect all of them and I can get my save game object here. Get saved health, plug it in for current, get saved max health, plug that in for max health, get saved obtained objects, plug that in for our obtained objects, 
do the same thing with the saved prestige points. And finally with our saved region. Make sure we did not forget anything. So we got XP, XP for next level, current level, current health, max health, obtained objects, prestige points, and the current region. Finally, we want to get our saved location. And what we want to do is set actor location of ourselves to that. After we did that, we can add a return node copy that return node for our cast failed here compile save and that's it for our load game function what we'll do now is start to work on our widgets so let's go to our quest system folder widgets and create a new user interface widget blueprint that we'll call save slot open that up and we will set it to be desired on screen we don't need animations and kill the canvas panel Instead, we will start with a size box, check width and height override, and I will use a size of 720 pixel in X and 180 in Y. We will add a button to our size box, which we can call the save slash load button, because it will fulfill both purposes. And let's set up some styling here. So for the normal, we can give it a tint. And I'll just type in some hex linear codes that I use in my personal project. So for the default, that will be 0D, 0E, 0C, FF, something like a dark grayish brown color. For hovered, I'll use light blue, which has the hex linear code 004B57FF. And we'll also need to do the pressed here. Tint for that will be a slightly darker bluish tone. For example, 002227FF. Right? After you set up the style, we will add a canvas panel to the save load button and we'll set it to horizontally and vertically fill without any padding. Can call it canvas and check the is variable. So we will access that later. Also, we will set the visibility to hit test invisible. So no matter what is in our canvas, if you click something on the canvas, the save and load button will react to that and not the canvas, which is great because we will add some images and text to the canvas now. First off, add an image to the canvas, which we can just call something like player icon, align that to the left center, and size will be 160 in both dimensions. Let's move that 24 pixels in X and something like minus 80 in Y. For the image, we can select our standard icon, icon standard that we'll also see in our main widget. Then we will need to add some text. So first one, we will anchor to the upper center. And the text here will just read level colon. Position will be minus 146 in X and 12 in Y. Size in X will be 95 and in Y 42. And that's everything for the text here. Let's add another one to our canvas. And this time it will say region column. Also anchor that to the upper center like our level text. And the position here will be minus 148 and 64 size 117 in X and 40 in Y. Add another text to the canvas. This time that will say last time saved colon. We will anchor that to the lowest center now and position in X will be minus 62. Position in Y minus 52. 
size in x 240 and size in y 40. Also we will set the font to be italic and now we also need three texts that actually display the values. So drag another text into our canvas, call it level text, make sure it's set to be a variable, anchor it to the upper center. You can type in something like nine for the default text. Hit the size to content button here and we'll move that over. So position in X will be minus 26 and in Y eight. Then we'll crank up the size to maybe 29 and make it bold italic with an outline of one pixel. Drag in another text, which will be the region text. Make that a variable, anchor it to the upper center like a level. Check the size to content. Default text can be Canto. Again, make that bold italic, maybe with a slightly lower font size, 27, and an outline of one pixel. Let's move that again. So position will be minus 30 in X and 64 in Y. Then we'll need one more text in our canvas, which will be the time text. That will also be a variable anchored to the lower center now. Default text can be something like 19 colon 45. Position this time 175 and minus 56. We'll use a size of 29. Bold italic. Again, outline of 1. Set the justification to be line text center. And then we will increase the size in X to 175 and in y to 45 and that should do it compile save and in the next part we will continue from here and implement all the functionality to generate our slots save to slots and load from slots see you in the next one